In 10.6, we are taking our parabolas, we're taking those vertexes, and there's two different forms that we're going to be switching things from. We're going to be taking things that are in this form, called vertex form, and we're going to be switching them over to standard form. That's going to be like one of our major ideas, is taking something that might be in this way and show you that it can be also be written in the other way and they're still the same thing as each other. They're the same exact graph. We're just going to manipulate the equation because sometimes when you look at this, it's easy to find the vertex. When you look at the standard form, it's easy to know what the y-intercept is. You won't know that until we have you do some more types of problems. So in the beginning of this whole section, what this worksheet is going to have you do, it's going to say, are these equivalent equations? Is this equation the same as that? And what you have to know <clears throat> is that when you're doing these problems and they're asking if they're equivalent, you have to know they're asking for more than one answer. They're asking for several answers. A lot of times there's more than one. So for each problem, you're going to have to do it multiple times so that you know how many things are equivalent. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert from vertex form into standard form. We're going to take things that are like this and put it into that form. There's a way to do it. How do we do it? We're going to follow these three steps. We're going to FOIL. After we FOIL, we're going to leave things in brackets, and then we're going to distribute any GCF in front of those parentheses. And we'll combine like terms. Then the last thing that we're going to use, this will be the easy stuff, and then this stuff will make, it, will make that a little bit harder. If you know what the zero product property is, then you'll be able to use it to find solutions. So let's explain the zero product property. If there's a product of two things, let me just kind of zoom in right here. If I have something times something equals zero, either the first group has to be zero or the second group has to be zero or both of those things have to be equal to zero. That is a mathematical concept that we can use to find solutions. There is no such thing as the 12 product property or the 20 product property, but there is something called the zero product property. It's what we use to find solutions when it multiplies to equal zero. How are we going to use it? We're going to use it when we solve by factoring. If we have it equal to zero and we have it factored, then what we can use is use it to find the solutions. I'll give you some examples as we get through it. So with that being said, let's do some examples. This is number one on your worksheet. It says, which of the following are equivalent to y equals x squared minus 16? Is this equivalent? And if you think about it, what is x take away nothing? x take away nothing would, let me see, hmm. Uh, 10 take away 0 is 10. 11 take away 0 is 11. x take away 0 is going to be x. So that would make it x squared minus 16. Is that the same thing as x squared minus 16? Yes, it is. A is equivalent, but don't stop there. On your test, it's going to say something like this. Check all that apply. Just so you're test ready. It means that there's going to be more than one answer. So then we try the next one. X minus 4 in parentheses squared, the quantity X minus 4. What you have to remember, let me see, that's the same thing as X minus 4 times X minus 4. And hopefully you remember how to FOIL that out. Something that you learned a long time ago uh, in unit 9. x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 is x squared 
minus 8x plus 16. Let's look at that. Is that the same thing as the other thing? Are they equivalent? Nope. Then we try the next one. X plus nothing. Is it, are they equivalent? Yep. Now this one looks kind of close. Let me see. 1 times x squared is x squared. 0 times x is 0. So if I'm adding 0 or adding nothing, let's not write that down. Let's just write x squared plus 16. That looks pretty close. Wait, that 16 is negative. This is positive. They're not equivalent. What about E? Let's foil this out. Let's find out. X squared minus 4X plus 4X. Something's going to happen there. Minus 16. 4X minus 4X makes 0. X squared minus 16 is what I'm getting. Is that the same? Yes, it is. It's equivalent. And for f, let's check. I have 4x squared minus 16. It looks close, but this is 4x squared and that is just x squared. So no, it is not. Three answers were equivalent. Three answers were not. Do not be afraid to have multiple answers correct on numbers 1 and 2. The second major idea that you have is how do we go from something in this form and convert it into standard form? We have three steps. The three steps say FOIL, distribute, combine like terms. Well, what does that mean? That means that you take this piece here first and we're going to FOIL it out. X plus 4 times X plus 4. We're going to FOIL that out and we leave the GCF in front of it. As a matter of fact, I usually will put brackets or parentheses because there's a lot of work inside there. I put the plus 2 behind it. But x plus 4 times x plus 4, I go x times x. x times 4 plus 4x plus another 4x plus a 16. These two little pieces simplify, so I'm going to leave this one half. X squared plus 8X plus 16. And there's still that plus 2 outside. That's step one. Step one is distribute. Step two, if you have a GCF in front, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. You multiply this into each one of those things. Thank you. So step two, I multiply this in. Now if one half does not go into the number in front, just leave it one half x squared. That's why we taught you fractions, so you can leave fractions in your answer. But half of 8x is 4x. And half of 16 is 8. Once that goes in, you still have this plus 2. The last step, step 3, is combining your like terms. These two things right there. Eight plus 2 is plus 10. Which tells you, if you were to graph this, this equation is the same thing as this equation. They both have the same A value. The Y-intercept is easier to see here, though. Notice there is no Y-intercept in that. That's your H and your K, opposite same. Just a different way to write it. Converting is your second major idea. Your third major idea in this section is how to use the zero product property and factoring using the zero product property. So it says, use this to solve. So remember what it says. It says A times B equals zero. That's what the zero product property states. 
And that means either the, the A has to be zero or the B has to be zero. That means this parenthesis has to be zero or this parenthesis has to be zero since it multiplies to be zero. Here's what we do. You take this factor, the 2x minus 7, and you set it equal to zero. You write an equation for that branch. I call it a branch. And then take this 4x plus 10, and this branch could also be equal to zero. I set them both up equal to zero because either this has to be zero or that has to be zero since it multiplies to be zero. And then what you do is you set up both of these two things. It's okay. You set up both of these two equations equal to zero and you solve them separately. So I add seven, I add seven. I get two x, that makes zero, equals seven. Okay. That's it for now. And I divide by two. And if two does not go in there, just leave that as your answer. Don't freak out that it's a fraction. As long as it's in lowest terms, that's okay. You'll do the same thing over here. 10 minus 10 makes zero. You do the opposite. That makes negative 10 equals 4x. 4 is multiplying the x. The opposite of multiply is divide. And then you put this in lowest terms. You have two answers. These two answers, we generally put them in a solution set. And the reason they're in a solution set is because it says it's either this answer or this answer or both answers. And we always write them smallest to largest as math teachers. Because that's how they write it on the ACT, the SAT, and the SBAC. So to recap, zero product property, this equals zero or this equals zero, and you solve each one and you put your answers in a bracket. That's it. There'll be several problems. A through 13 are just like this. It'll be easy for you. But some problems get harder after that. Number 14 through 25, we're going to use it, but we have to factor first. This doesn't multiply to equal zero, but it can if we factor it. We might have to use the stuff we learned in 9.3 and 9.4 and 9.5 and 9.6. Last chapter comes directly to use now. Let me see. How do we do that? We go one times one is, is, uh, is the numbers in front. That's going to multiply to be F, the first, meaning N times n will make that first times the first to get to n squared. The 15, we either have 15 times 1, 1 times 15, 3 times 5, or 5 times 3. Those are the ways we can get to 15. The last times the last should equal this. And what we talked about back in Unit 9 was how do we know which one to use? You know which one to use based off of the O plus I. That's this middle term right here. we got to choose the ones when we multiply them that we're going to be able to get to a positive 2 somehow. Let me think about that. 15 and 1 times 15 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1. 15 minus 1 is 14 or 15 plus 1 is 16. That doesn't make 2. Can't be that. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 15 is 15. Adding them makes 16. Subtracting makes 14. That doesn't make 2. Can't be that. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 5 is 5. 5 minus 3 is 2. I might be able to use that, the 3 and the 5. Thank you. Well, how am I going to get to a positive 2? I need this to be a positive 5n. And I need this 3 to be negative 3n. 5n minus 3n is 2n. The outside and the inside. Let me write that down just so you can see it. Plus 5n minus 3n. 
those two things add up to be that plus 2n. And then the last times the last still equals a negative 15. That's what we did last unit. We factoring meant turn it into multiplication. And now that we're in this unit, since it says solve, this times this equals 0, either the first group equals 0 or the second group equals 0. What you'll do now is you're going to take that first branch, set it equal to 0. You'll take that second branch, set it equal to 0. And you're going to find your solutions. You'll add 3. You know your first solution. You'll subtract 5. You know your second solution. There are two solutions. These solutions are zeros. They are also called roots. They are also called intercepts. They are places where this will cross the x-axis. So I have two more examples of what happens when. What happens when it's equal to 12? That You can't use a zero product property here. There's no 12 product property. What does that mean? Subtract 12 from both sides. That way, in step 1, 12 minus 12 will equal 0, and now it will equal 0. Now we can factor it, and then it will multiply to equal 0. And we can use the zero product property. How do we do that? We're going to do a W times a W or a 1 times a 1. 12, we got a lot of choices. 12 times 1. 6 times 2, 4 times 3, maybe even the other way around. Let me just write those down just in case. And then we just kind of are going to be picking until we get to a positive 1, an O and an I. Let me see. 12 and 1. Make 13 or 11. That doesn't work. 6 and 2 adds to 8 and subtracts to 4. That does not work. 4 and 3, 4 minus 3 is 1. That might work. Let's try that. W, W, 4 and 3. Let's see if those work. If I get a positive 4W and a negative 3W, positive 4 minus 3 will make a positive 1W, and negative 3 times positive 4 is negative 12. That's factoring. That's what we did last unit. That's what that whole unit was about. Now we could use the zero product property. Either this branch equals zero, or this branch is equal to zero, or both. When you are solving these two things, You then write your answer. Most, most math teachers across the district are going to want your answer in a solution set bracket, smallest to largest. Technically, we're saying these are where your x-intercepts are. These are where it crosses the x-axis. These are also called zeros. These are your solutions. My last example is 23. 23, hmm, it doesn't equal 0. Well, subtract the 21j. 21j minus 21j is 0. Then it will equal 0, and you can't put those together. 3j squared minus 21j, because they're not the same amount of j's. Or j squareds can only be combined with j squareds. J's can only be combined with j's when you're adding and subtracting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a GCF factoring. What if I factor out a 3J? <clears throat> Would that make 3J times J is 3J squared minus 7? This times this is that. This times that is that. Cool. 
Now, even if there's just a GCF, but it multiplies the equal zero, we can still use the zero product property. This could still equal zero, and this branch could still equal zero using the zero product property. This one's pretty simple, add seven. Some people get confused when you see the three J equals zero, just divide by three and zero divided by three, J can also be zero. Your two solutions, places where it crosses the X axis is at zero and seven. Think about that, plug in zero. 3 times 0 squared is going to be equal to 21 times 0. Or 3 times 7 squared will equal 21 times 7. It works. I'm going to stop your nose right there.